Now coming to the actual application of uh, one-way ANOVA, if we use uh, Minitab for conducting this test, we will navigate to STAT. Within that, we will find ANOVA and within that, we have one-way ANOVA. We can reorganize the data now in two columns, one column for response, which is the reporting time and second column for the city. In case of one-way ANOVA, if uh, we want to go with the format we had seen earlier in the slides, where the response is captured city-wise in three different columns, we can use one-way unstacked. Now here we choose the confidence level or 1 minus alpha as 95%, which means we want to have 95% confidence in our final statistical interpretation of rejecting or failing to reject our null hypothesis. Under comparisons, select Tukey's test. Mostly these comparisons are skipped, but it is good to know the concept as it helps to shortlist the factor level with highest performance. You already know that ANOVA can only tell if the factor levels are different. It cannot help uh, select the best performing level in most cases. Uh, you can also select box plots under graphs as it helps to graphically visualize the spread of data in terms of quartiles. Now just as a reminder before we get into the interpretations that uh, in this example that we are talking about, our null hypothesis would be that means of the factor levels are similar. Okay, now getting into the interpretations, once we run the one way ANOVA in Minitab, the first set of calculated stats that we should interpret is in the ANOVA table. It summarizes the sum of squares, mean sum of squares, the F stat and the P value primarily. The mean sum of squares for factor, which in this case is city, denotes the variance for between subgroup and mean sum of squares for error. This denotes within subgroup variance. For one or more factor levels to be significantly different, the first criteria to check is that the between variance should be greater than within variance. So in this example, it holds true as 64 is greater than 0.9. Next is the F stat, which is the ratio between the variance or the mean sum of squares for between subgroup and within subgroup. We understand that the between variance should be greater than within variance. So F stat, which is their ratio is always higher the better. But then the question would be how much higher of F stat is better. For this statistical interpretation, we need the probability of the critical F stat in a F distribution. And that should be as high as what we have got in this example, that is 72.29. This probability would be given by P value. So if the probability is going to be less than our test significance level which we had taken at 5% then it would infer that our data sets don't align with the null hypothesis which we stated that uh, the variances would be similar. Now in this case we see the p-value is 0, 0.0 which is obviously less than alpha. So what do we do? we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis that at least two out of three factor levels are significantly different from the other. 
then we have s here which is equal to 0.94 now s is the within sample standard deviation that is the square root of mean sum of squares for error because we had said that mean sum of squares for error is nothing but within sample variance uh, it is also equivalent to the pooled standard deviation which is the common variance for all factor level means then there is r squared value or it's also called the coefficient of determination which tells us what percentage of variance in response is explained by the selected factor levels here it is 84.26% and it's a good value any value in fact greater than 80 percent is good in ANOVA last stat is the R squared adjusted value which uh, adjusts the R squared value to nullify the impact of dummy variables and again greater than 80 percent is is a good value in case of ANOVA so as per the ANOVA table since p value is less than 0 0.05 which is nothing but alpha or the test level of uh, significance that we had taken we reject the null hypothesis that ambulance response times are similar across all cities which means that we have enough statistical evidence to believe that two of the three cities have response times significantly different from the third one i hope this video was useful we would always be delighted to see your likes comments and mails as we consider you an integral part of our learning endeavor keep watching this space as we plan to host more learning videos on concepts from dmac lean dfss re-engineering theory of constraints bpm and operations research please do subscribe to the page and keep receiving updates as and when we upload a new tutorial. Do share the links or channel details in your group so we end up creating a much larger learning community. In case you want us to talk about any specific concept, feel free to contact us. The contact details are mentioned here on the slide as well as on the page. So good luck and happy learning.